It's here, the final four. We've made it through March Madness. It is now April Fool's Day, but tomorrow we will be watching the final four. Kansas will take on Villanova, while the Blue Bloods of North Carolina and Duke will face off for the very first time ever in the NCAA tournament. They've never played each other. So we'll be discussing the final four and also can't go through a podcast without talking about my Illini. Brad Underwood is not going anywhere. He is an Illini through and through contract extension. All you Brad Underwood haters probably don't want to listen. We're going to discuss final four, Brad Underwood and other college basketball news today on the Coach Steve Show podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to the Coach Steve Show podcast. Please make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button on the Coach Steve Show YouTube channel. Helps get the show out there. Uh, please follow it, rate it, be a friend, tell a friend. It can be found anywhere you listen to your podcast. Please give it a rating on Apple. And also, if you're not listening to it on Apple, you listen on Spotify, you can still get a review on Spotify. It's new. So go do all that for me, please, and thank you. Uh, Twitter at Coach underscore Steve 72. Uh, go check all that out. Uh, Facebook group, Coach Steve Show, TikTok at Coach underscore Steve72, all that good stuff. It's all there. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, before we get going on the Final Four and Brad Underwood, uh, this podcast is brought to you by the Belly Up Media Network. Go check it out in the description below. Uh, this There's great content out there, not just sports, just media in general. Uh, so go check out podcasts, blogs, shows, anything out there, the Bell Media Network. And all you football coaches that might be tuned in, I am here to save you money, and I'm here to help you with your offensive, defensive linemen, the big guys in the trenches, because they're the ones that hit every single play. That's why it's the best position in football. There's a way to protect those shells and reduce the repetitive blows those guys take to each and every week, and it's Guardian Caps. If you go to guardiansports.com slash guardian-caps and use the code 15 off, you will save 15% off your order. It reduces the impact by 20 to 33%, which is huge. And you've got to protect the big guys in the trenches. It's worn by over five NFL teams and 200-plus colleges like Roll Tide Alabama, I guess Ohio State, who cares about Ohio State, Penn State, Oklahoma, Tons of colleges wear them. So again, guardiansports.com slash guardian dash caps and use the code 15 off to save 15% off your order. Thank you, Guardian Caps, for sponsoring the podcast. And football coaches, if I still have your ear and you're looking for drills going into your spring ball, if you're already there, you're heading into the summer, uh, or just to have in your back pocket, we all need drills to get more simple, back to the basics. And that is what Coach Stone has done for all of us football coaches. If you go to CoachStoneFootball.com, check out his Back to the Basics Football Drill Manuals. His very first book is over 500 pages of drills. And if you don't know, that's a ton, ton. You will never have to look up another drill again, I promise you. Thank you, Coach Stone, for sponsoring the podcast. Before we dive into the Final Four, I can't go without talking about my Illinois Fighting Illini right there. Can't point the right way. They have committed to Brad Underwood. Now, he already had a contract, but they extended and gave him a little pay raise. So let's talk about it real quick in the article. Illinois men basketball coach Brad Underwood has received a one-year contract extension that increases his current deal to a six-year contract, keeping him through the 2027-2028 season. This deal, which gives him an annual $500,000 raise, uh, his, last year, he made $3.5 million on base compensation uh, and retention incentive of $600,000, bringing his total compens compensation to $4.1 million. 
Underwood's proposed contract calls for an annual $300,000 increase in base compensation and a $200,000 uh, increase in the annual retention bonus. He was slated to make $3.8 million in base compensation with $300,000 retentive incentive. incentive. I cannot read. So he is now slated to make $4.1 million in base compensation and $500,000 in retention incentives. That would make him the eighth highest paid coach in the country based on last year's salaries, according to USA Today. His buyout will increase, but there's no details on that. Um, previous contract before this extension, um, Underwood was required to pay half of his remaining guaranteed contract, about $9.5 million. If he left this year for a non-Big Ten team, if he left for a Big Ten opponent, he'd have to pay his full guaranteed contract or about $19 million. Illinois has led an Illinois resurgence. After missing the NCAA tournament from 2014 to 2019, Illinois has gone 44-16 and 16 during Big Ten play during the last three seasons, five wins better than any other Big Ten program. The Illini have made back-to-back -back NCAA tournament appearances Though Illinois has lost in the round of 32 to lower seed opponents, number one seed Illinois lost to number seed eight Loyola, and then this year lost to number five seed Houston, which, you know, we can talk about lower seeds. Houston was under, they should have been ranked higher, who made it to the Elite Eight. Illinois Athletic Director Josh Whitman said in a statement, Brad Underwood has led a remarkable resurgence of our men's basketball program under a strong leadership. We have won... Big Ten Championships posted one of the best three-year runs in the history of the final line I basketball program and the Big Ten Conference and reestablished ourselves on the national stage. Our work is far from finished, and Brad and I are hungry to continue on our upward trajectory next year and in the years beyond. But the foundation has been laid for sustained success long into the future. I am grateful to Brad, Susan, and the entire Underwood family for their commitment to the University of Illinois. I cannot be more excited about continuing our journey together. Underwood said a statement, we came to the U of I, with the vision of restoring an elite program and the success over the last three years has only strengthened our belief in what we can ultimately achieve here. With the alignment we have from top down, the university administration, Josh's outstanding leadership to the investment of our loyal donors, providing a world-class uh, renovated up and practice facility and to our passionate fans who sell at the state farm center assembly hall every night, Everything is in place for us to compete for championships, which is fantastic. Fantastic. I've said this before on behalf of my wife, Susan, our family. I want to reiterate how thankful we are for the way we've been welcomed to the Champaign, Urbana, and the U of I communities. There's simply no better place to live, no better school to represent, and no better program to lead. I am honored to coach the final line of basketball program and look forward to many exciting years lie ahead for our program. So, we talked about that. So, let's talk about Brad Underwood and that contract extension. First of all, it is worth every penny. Every penny. I've talked about this before. My friends, Logan and, you know, I have not met Craig in person, but I'm calling him a friend since he's friend of Logan on their podcast. And they discussed Brad Underwood haters. And I'm going to discuss it again. People out there that want him fired because of what's happened in these tournaments can go suck an egg, can go kick rocks, go root for Ohio State or somebody, or go root for Indiana. I don't care. Don't be rooting for this Illini program anymore. What Brad Underwood has done for this program has been nothing but extraordinary. Because what gives some of us fans or some of you Illini fans the right for us to demand that we remove Brad Underwood from being the coach what gives us the right? We were not Duke, even though I'm not a big Coach K guy. That's why I don't never want to be called Coach K. We are not a program from that time period that was just competing for championships and this and that. Again, I have said this from the get-go. We had that run in the mid-2000s. Bill Self recruited some people. Bruce Weber recruited some people. And then we've kind of had the strength. Now, if we had good basketball players throughout this time, yes, and that's what's made being an Illinois fan very frustrating because we've had good basketball players come through this program. We have just not lived up to getting to the tournament. We have not lived up to winning basketball games consistently. We'll up, you know, with some here and there. But we've had good players come through. Brad Underwood, in a video that has been posted, told the players – 
You don't know how to win yet. And I'm here to try to help show you how to win and handle winning. It's a process. Now, why do basketball coaches get longer time than football? Maybe because there's more money involved. Maybe because there's more players to deal with. I don't know. But in basketball, we have to be patient. Because in basketball, now it happens in football. In basketball, you got teams that are not your power five that can win some games. And we've seen it. We always see it in the NCAA tournament. St. Peter's is a per prime example. Look at their budget compared to all the teams that they beat. It's pretty significantly less. But the Illini basketball program does have a history. You have the Flying Illini. You have other teams. There's a rich history for Flying Illini basketball that Brad Underwood has stated time and time again that he wants to get back to. From my time, you had the 90s. Then you had the early 2000s were pretty decent. Then you had the 0405, which we will never forget. If you were, you know, at the time we were 14 years old. If you were maybe under 10 years old, you might not remember. But that time, that's the team that you think about. You think between 04 to about 06, because the, I am going to say this, the team after that 0405 season was still pretty good. You still had D. Brown, you had James Augustine, you had guys that still could play. That's what we think about. And then ever since then, we've just been inconsistent where we play at elite level or we're down here. Bruce Weber leaves. We go through some head coaches. We have some good players come through. But we're just not there. And then, like I said earlier, we don't make the tournament from 2014 to 2019. And if it wasn't for COVID, we're talking about these two-year run here. We would have had a three-year run if it wasn't for COVID. We were hot, playing well. That started this turnaround. That started to get it back because there's phases that I would love to talk to Brad Underwood about. But from the outside looking in, there's phases when you rebuild a program. I've always just described it as you lay the foundation, you build the house. He's not going to talk about previously. All he's going to talk about is what he walked into. He's not going to say who did a bad job or what, but he has to bring it back. So first, you have to deal with the leftover. No offense to players, but he comes in and says, okay, I have players that I've not recruited. I've got to convince them to stay. I've got to figure out how to coach them, number one. Number two, you're surrounded by teams in the Big Ten that are established when he comes in, so now he's got a battle. You've got to introduce a new coaching staff. You've got to introduce a new culture. You have to introduce a new offense, the way you're going to coach defense, how you adjust your offense, how you adjust drills, how you watch film, how do you present yourself here. There are things that he has to present, and it takes time. Then the biggest thing for college sports is recruiting. How do you get good recruits in to buy into what you're selling? And that's why it takes some time to get young guys in, build them up. That's why the Trent Frazier's of the world, Monte Williams is of the world, Io DeSumo's, and, and everything else in the Kofi, they had to buy in and help get there. Then you've got to figure out, okay, you win a game. How do you continue to win a game? How do you handle success? And that takes time couple seasons. Now we're here. Now we've turned a corner. Yes. Is it frustrating to lose in the round of 32 two years in a row? Yes. Talk about losing to a lower seat this year does not sit well with me because Houston was a very good team. Now that they lost last year, yes, you can make a case for that. But we've won a regular season Big Ten tournament. We've won the Big Ten, a uh, regular season Big Ten championship. We've won a tournament Big Ten championship. So you Illini fans that sit there and say, Brad Underwood, who, who are you going to go get that's better than Brad Underwood? Brad Underwood should coach here the rest of his life as long as we continue. Now what people are frustrated with is, oh, we have these All-Americans and this, this, and that. I am not going to put words in Coach Underwood's mouth. I want him to come on the podcast. I want to talk to him about it. But thinking from a coach's perspective, you can lead the horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. Now, he's going to take the blame. As a coach, I always take the blame. He'll take the blame. But you, you're, there's good teams out there. The Big Ten is a meat grinder. Maybe it needs to be scaled back from 20 games. I have no idea. But it's a meat grinder. And were we always at full strength as a team? No, we've had injuries. Our point guard was always hurt. So how can we sit there and say that Brad Underwood cannot – it needs to go. Who are we going to get? So, Brad Underwood will never listen to this. Coach Underwood, sorry. He'll never listen to this. He'll never come on the podcast. I would love to talk to him. Lifelong Illini fan. 
Big time Coach Underwood fan. Love what he's selling. He's picking up what he's putting down. Um, love to talk to him about the rebuildance of this because I've been a part of football programs to rebuild. Brad Underwood, Coach Underwood. Don't listen to those fans. I know you probably don't anyway, but those are not real fans. Those are not true Illini fans. Those are, oh, Illinois is kind of good. Uh, you know, we call them bandwagon fans, but it's not full on bandwagon. You know what I mean? You know, they're just test driving right now. And they just need something to talk about. So, hey, he's gotten to the round of 32 two years in a row. <sniffs> Got to go. No, no. Keep him around as long as he wants. He's worth every penny. Worth every penny. And as long as we continue to battle and compete for Big Ten championships, we're making the tournament. We're winning tournament games. We're competing. You keep him around as long as possible. So Brad Underwood is an Illini contract extension. Had to talk about it. Uh, so thank you, Mr. Whitman, for signing Coach Underwood to an extension. Thank you, Coach Underwood, for coaching the Illini basketball team. So moving on, we have made it to the Final Four. So let's talk about the Final Four games. Old Illini coach Bill Self, yes, coached at Illinois, and his Kansas team will now face the Villanova Wildcats. I believe they're the Wildcats. They will be facing off tomorrow as well. Uh, Villanova coming off a win. Kansas coming off a win. Uh, Kansas sits at 32 and 6. Villanova sits at 30 and 7. Kansas is the number one seed. Villanova is the number two seed. Uh, right now, Villanova is 50.8% picked to win over Kansas, who sits at 49.2. Looking at ESPN's spread, Kansas, though, is minus 4.5. Villanova is plus 4.5. Over under is 134. Very evenly matched teams. Villanova averages 71 points a game. Kansas averages 78. Field goal percentage shooting. Kansas sits at 47. Villanova 43. Uh, rebounding 34 to Villanova 38 to Kansas. Kansas gets 15.4 assists per game. Uh, Villanova's at 11.9 to 12. Um, very evenly matched teams. Their current streaks each, they have both won nine in a row. Uh, so their last five, they have won. The closest game for Kansas uh, was against Creighton of all teams. Uh, Kansas pulls that win out 79-72. to 72. Uh, The last close game for Villanova was their last game, 50-44 to 44 over Houston, who did beat by Illini, but they did beat them in the Elite Eight. Both, I uh, believe Kansas, you know, Kansas won their tournament, uh, their Big 12. And Villanova won their tournament. So evenly matched teams, but Villanova is going to go in without one of their main players and Justin Moore. Um, against Houston, they did beat Houston 50 to 44. But the story that did take a backseat to losing Justin Moore. He averages uh, 15 points, 4.9 rebounds. He plays 34 minutes uh, for them. He tore his Achilles tendon in the last minute of the game. He will undergo surgery, and he will not be able to play versus Kansas. This happened 36 seconds left. They were up 48 to 44. He went to make a move to a to the basket, and then he just collapsed in pain. Um, we've seen this with Kobe Bryant and Kevin Durant, where they tear their Achilles. It is not good. Uh, it's not fun to see. Um, this is one of their good players. Yeah, like I said, he plays 34 minutes. Average it. That's 15 points. Now you've got to. Uh, make up for that's leadership you have to make up for that is going to hurt Villanova going into this um, into this game versus Kansas and you know you feel for him but it's going to be a major impact one that's leadership that you're missing leadership is huge two that's 15 points that you're going to miss now does this necessarily mean they're going to lose to Kansas no that does not mean that they're going to be upset or anything like that. Um, but it is does necessarily mean that you need somebody to step up off your bench uh, to make up for that leadership, to make up for the points and the rebounds that you're going to miss. Now, it's March Madness, even though it's April. It's March Madness. 
Villanova could still win this game, but that is going to hurt them. And with Kansas being at full strength, Kansas having a lot of confidence, having experience, and an experience that both experience had coaches, but Bill Self has won a couple few championships. This bowls more well for Kansas. You feel for Justin Moore, but that's a huge piece when that's 34 minutes that you're missing. So now you've got to find a person or two or three to make up for those minutes. Need some guys to fill into that role. You may have to tweak your offense a little bit, whereas Kansas is at full strength. Kansas is not going to have to tweak anything. The only advantage is they don't know who you're going to play if you're Kansas. They're looking at Villanova going, okay, who are they going to put in to try to make up for that? Um, So you're looking at this Kansas-Villanova game, which part of the Blue Bloods, Villanova is. I don't know if they're considered a Blue Blood. I think they are. I think the original reason why they're called Blue Bloods is because the original teams wore blue, and Kansas is one of them. We're blue. Um Mentally, how is Villanova going to handle losing Justin Moore? It could go one of two ways. It could be too much for them to overcome. It could lead to them being motivated to say we're going to play for him. It could go either way. But Kansas being at full strength with the guys they have, um, it's going to be tough for Villanova. It's going to be very, very tough. Um, So looking at this, you're going to have to lead towards Kansas. I'm going to say his name wrong. Agbaji, I cannot say his name. He's a guard. He averages 18.9 points a game. Uh, Harris Jr. is their leading assist guy, uh, 4.2 assists per game. Field goal percentage, Christian Bronze shoots 49%. Um, defensively, uh, rebounds per game, Jalen Wilson gets you 7.4 rebounds. Harris Jr. gets you your most steals. So just looking at losing that, you're going to have to lean towards Kansas in this. Um, They've played well all year. They have guys that play a lot of minutes. Uh, You know, we talked about uh, Abaji. I cannot say his name. He averages 8.9 points a game, but he plays 35 minutes. Braun averages 4.3 points, 34 minutes a game. Wilson gets you 11 points. So there's just – a lot to go around. Uh, they they shoot high percentage. They play good team basketball like Bill Self teams do. So you have to look at this and go with the loss of Justin Moore, who's big time leadership, you're going to have to lean towards Kansas in this game. Now, does Villanova have a chance? Absolutely they do. It just depends on how do they overcome the injury. Uh, does Kansas just have more in the tank? Because now they don't have – you have to rotate more guys if you're Villanova. Uh, when you were one game back from Providence in the Big East, but played pretty well, played pretty well. Um, looking at who scores more for them, uh, Gillespie, you know, we talked about Justin Moore, I have just 15 points. This, you know, he scores 15.6 points. Um, so that does hurt, does hurt them, but I don't think it's going to be a blow up by Kansas by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but when you look at Justin Moore, who averages 15 points a game, he plays 34 minutes. He leads the team in playing minutes at 34.6. Gillespie is right behind him at 34.1 minutes. So to try to replace that, you know, when you're looking at your top six guys, then after your top six, the next leading minutes after that is um, Archetto, who I cannot say his name, is at 9.6 minutes. So you have a guy that comes off the bench that could help you um, you know, Slater plays 30 minutes. Dixon plays 25 minutes. Uh, Daniels plays 27 minutes. So you have a guy off the bench that could come in and play some minutes. But you're just going to have to throw everything in the kitchen sink at Kansas. Now, Kansas just can't overlook them because of the injury, of course. Uh, but, again, you have to lean towards Kansas in this one. So my prediction in that, in that game for the Final Four is Kansas. That just a more injury. We're going to have to see how they overcome it. Now on to the game that everybody will probably watch more than Kansas and Villanova. North Carolina will play Duke. They have never played each other ever, which everybody, of course, knows, in the tournament ever, which is shocking for as long as they've been playing basketball. For being in the same tournament, we've seen teams play each other in the regular season, have to see each other again in the tournament before. So it's shocking. 
Now, will this be one of the best Final Four or March Madness games you've ever seen? I actually think so. I'm not talking about championships. I'm just talking about tournament games. Uh, this will be one of the best games we've seen. This will go down in history as one of the best games we see. Why? This ain't no ordinary rivalry. There's rivalries out there that are bigger than others. This, they hate each other, as we know. Duke and North Carolina hate each other. I, it's probably an Ohio State, Michigan. It's probably more. They hate each other. And the reason why, of course, this is amped up even more is because the last time they met each other, it was Coach K's last game coaching at home. The very last time. And North Carolina beat them. 94 to 81. Now, I'm going to say this. Coach K might be the best college basketball coach of all time. That's up for debate, I guess. But I'll just say one of the best basketball coaches, college basketball coaches we have seen ever. So I'll give the man that respect. Coaching at Duke for as long as he has, that's that's due for some respect. So you can't take that away. But here's the problem. He announces he's going to retire, let you know, I believe it was the summer. But goes around saying that it's not about him. It makes him cringe when things get made about him. Everywhere he went, people did something for him. There was some type of celebration. Every away game, there were, you know, if it was the last time he's going to be there, this was the celebration of Coach K. And he accepted it graciously and say, you know, yeah, this is the last time I'm going to coach here. This ain't about me. It's about Duke. But he's always said he is Duke. So the problem a little bit I have about the Coach K thing is it's been made about him. If I was a coach and a team wanted to do a celebration and you knew it was happening, I would say, please don't do the celebration. If you want to do something like give me a basketball or whatever, that's great. But there was some type of party. There was some type of celebration. So Coach K has subconsciously, maybe without even realizing it, has made this season more about him. And I understand that you want to retire, but you want to have one more goal. If you know that you're going to retire, a part of me is, well, then save it for the end of the year. The end of the year, retire. Because here is the problem. Now, Duke has outplayed, has played longer than I thought they were going to in this tournament. Because the pressure mounting that you have to give Coach K a championship before he retires is huge. Now, the, the NCAA tournament, they've handled it great. They've play, Duke's played good all year. Except for the tournament when they their their conference tournament where they lost to Virginia Tech, which really they you know they beat North Carolina as well. But that's a lot of pressure to put on kids. And there's a part of this when you look at it going, he's made this about himself. Not I don't know if it intended that way, but it's become that. And, and it's funny after you know North Carolina beat him the first time where he was looking at the students, I said, no, 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 hep. Shut up. No, stop it. Telling kids to shut up and, you know, the way he talks and everything else and, and this, this, and that. It's kind of made about himself. And that's just my opinion. I'm not a huge Coach K hater. I respect what he's done. But he does have a lot of haters. And this is hard for me because I made it, I liked, I didn't hate North Carolina because of Michael Jordan. But when you date back to the 2004 or five season where some team that I like played North Carolina the championship where they cheated, the refs, you know, these, these kids took fake classes. Um, there were sur there was uh, these refs and their calls during that game were suspect for Sean May when it was his birthday. And then Sean May collapsed in the, NFL, or the NBA and did not play very well. I loved it. They beat my Illinois and I had this grudge hold against North Carolina ever since. And loved when they lost. So when it always came to North Carolina and Duke, I could care less. It was a great basketball game to watch all the time. That rivalry it runs deep. 
but I could care less who won and lost. Part of me loved it when North Carolina lost because of what they did to Illinois, taking away that championship. But there's also there's also this little thing for Duke that you just don't like. So I could care less. But this is going to be great TV. This is going to be one of the best, hyped up to be one of the best basketball games we've seen in a tournament. That This rivalry is not a normal rivalry. So you've got Coach K, who's made this last year selfishly about him, and this North Carolina team that nobody ever, 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 ever thought they would get to this. They never thought they were going to get to the Elite Eight, and I'm one of them. Who knew they were going to make the tournament? Now, they played well. They got in the tournament. But who knew they were going to beat teams? There are going to be fireworks. So this game is, is hyped up to be one of the best. Right now, when you're looking at ESPN or whatever, Duke is picked 68.4% over North Carolina, 31.6%. Now, this is this is ESPN. Who cares? You know, you're looking at pick center or whatever it is. Duke is minus four. North Carolina is plus four. Duke is 32 and six. North Carolina is 28 and nine. The over under is 151. Duke regular season won their tournament. North Carolina comes in at two. At the beginning of the year, who knew that North Carolina was going to go to the tournament, you know, and everything else. Their last five games is pretty identical. They both lost to Virginia Tech, and then they've gone on to win. The closest game North Carolina has had was an overtime one versus the reigning national champion Baylor, 193 to 86. The closest game Duke has had was against Texas Tech, 78 to 73. Um, North Carolina averages 78.1 points per game. Duke averages 80. Um, field goal percentage is pretty even. Duke shoots 49% to North Carolina's 45. North Carolina gets three more rebounds, 40 to 37. Uh, Duke only averages one more assist, 16 over 15. Uh, pretty even on steal, six and five. Duke has the edge. Uh, blocks per game, who cares? Uh, five to three. Both have a four game win streak. And again, the last time they met, you know, North Carolina, quote unquote, upset and ruined the night of Duke. I am excited to watch this game. I don't really care to watch the games I do sometimes, but I don't make it a priority. Might have to make this one a priority. So, is the pressure going to be too much for these kids on Duke to try to get Coach K into the championship game to probably play Kansas? We're going to find out. Is the pressure going to be too much for North Carolina to sit there and say... We're going to upset them again, and we're going to beat them and make sure Coach K doesn't get there. I'd almost rather be North Carolina in this situation. And the reason is, Duke is remembering what happened to them. And sometimes that revenge factor is too much. It, you know what I'm saying? When you get so mad about it, and sometimes it could be uncontrollable. Now, I guess you could say a good thing you have Coach K as your coach. But how is he going to handle it as well? Because in this time, is it going to be too much? Is it going to be too much anxiety? Is there going to be too much going on? When you're North Carolina and nobody expected you to be here and you're off flying under the radar, you would rather be the underdog. You'd rather be flying under the radar. The only thing about North Carolina is... We've already beat them. Let's just beat them again. But because it's such a high rivalry game, they know that these games could be wild. That over under at 150, we, it, it could be 100. You never know. Defense could step up. But in this situation, I would rather be North Carolina than Duke. The pressure to try to win for Coach K is going to be huge. You made it to the Final Four. Now, some people didn't think Duke could get there. But more probably thought Duke could get there over North Carolina. This game is going to be wild. This game is going to be bloody. It's going to be a fist fight. And we're going to love every minute of it. North Carolina Duke is going to love every minute of it. Every minute of it. But Coach K has mainly made this year about himself. But for some, then all of a sudden in the, in the tournament, there's just, just been a, it's just been switched. So we're going to see how these Duke basketball players handle this. 
you're going to have, again, it's going to be a similar setup to what we had the last game for Coach K at Duke at home. You're going to have all these former NBA players, current NBA players, former players, whatever, former staff there to watch Duke. So the only argument I could see being made for their side, you're going to have people from North Carolina too there. There's a lot of NBA players from North Carolina going to be there. And I guarantee you the greatest basketball player of all time, Michael Jordan will be there. He was there when for when they beat Illinois. So which pressure is going which person's going to crack under the pressure? It's going to be North Carolina and the young guns that nobody expects to be there when you have Michael Jordan watching you. Is it going to be the Duke players where this legend of a basketball coach, you have to get him to the championship. And if you don't get him to the championship, you don't win the national championship, you're going to be the players that let down a legend in Coach K. So which pressure, which 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 diamond is going to crack under the pressure? For me. I would rather be North Carolina. And it pains me to say this. And all Illini fans, please forgive me. Everybody, former Illini, please forgive me for what I'm about to say. Please, Father, I do not know what I've done. Please, Father, forgive me. I am going with North Carolina in this one. Now, I don't want them to win the championship. I will go with Kansas. North Carolina is a tough team. I am going with North Carolina. I am going to say that Duke's going to come out hot. Duke will come out hot. But North Carolina will fight through it. Duke's going to come out and come out hot, or they're going to come out and miss everything because they're going to try too hard. But I'm going with North Carolina in this. I'd rather be North Carolina. Please, Illinois fans, forgive me. Please, Father, I do not know what I've done. I know I know not what I say or no, no, not what I do. But I'm going with North Carolina. But this is going to be one of the best games of the year. Predicted. Don't I get, quote me on that. I will go to the bank saying that. This will be one of the best games. Um, great Final Four matchups. So we are not going to be disappointed no matter what. Even if it's not one of the best, it's going to be pretty good basketball game because how often do you see this type of rivalry game come into the tournament? It's going to be great TV. It's going to be fantastic. Um, hopefully I'll be able to do a post game for both. Uh, but great, great basketball. And also thank goodness for Brad Underwood being extended. So um, that's wrapping up this show. Please, everybody, again, go like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I cannot thank people that have done that enough. We've got to grow it. Please leave comments how to grow the channel. I will take constructive criticism. Just be nice to me. Um, thank you guys for watching and are listening. Please, again, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Twitter is at Coach underscore Steve72. The TikTok, Coach Steve72. The Facebook page, the Coach Steve Show. Please go follow all that. Rate it on iTunes. Rate it on Spotify, but mainly iTunes and Apple. Um, thank you guys for watching and or listening. Go check out all the affiliates in the description below. Uh, enjoy the Final Four. It's going to be great. Um, baseball's coming back as well. We're going to have some baseball games coming up soon, so go enjoy that. Go Cubs, go. Um, thanks, everybody. Uh, this is Coach Steve, another episode of the Coach Steve Show podcast, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>